I've been thinking a lot this week about hope. And so I want to just answer three little things today. I want to throw out an idea to you. I hope that we'll continue uh, to have a conversation about it. But I want to talk about what is hope and why would you hope and where do you hope? Okay, so that's, I'm going to try and propose something to you today. What is hope? Hope is the determination and the work to stay afloat when your circumstances have other plans. Hope is hanging on when it looks like this thing is pulling away from you. Hope is the resilience to hang on, to wait, to work towards the good when you're not sure the good is going to win. We need hope. We live in a world where people are giving up, where people are discouraged, where we have sort of a collective funk going on, a depressive atmosphere sometimes. People are discouraged and they feel alienated and isolated. So I just want to say, don't give up hope. The worst thing that could happen is for you to give up hope. Because what the world really needs is people of hope who work for the good, who wait and expect a brighter day. One of the so the second question is, why hope? And as I have been thinking about this um, it, it, for weeks, I've been trying to figure out how, how I wanted to talk about hope. There's so many ways that you can go. One of the things I love, by the way, about uh, the fact that we do Advent every year is that we revisit these themes every year. And sometimes it feels like, well, I've already said that in previous years. I got to come up with something new, right? Something novel. But actually, for me, hope is one of those things where there's really not that much variation to say. I'm just glad that it comes up every year as a reminder. We got to be people of hope. Of anything else, if we're going to claim as people of faith, as a community of belief, hope has to be one of our main ingredients. And we need to be people who remind each other. Don't give up hope. I'll be here for you. We'll be here for you. Even if you fall, we'll help pick you up. If you go down, don't stay down. Right? We've got to lift each other up in hope. So why have hope? Here's the three things. When I am thinking about this for myself, here's what I say to myself. Number one, I've been through worse, and it didn't kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Now, some of you are like, I don't, I don't know if I've been through worst. Well, you know, as your pastor, I just want to say, just wait. <laughs> it's my, my ministry to you is to say, if it hasn't got you yet, it's coming. But we'll be here for you. <laughs> I've been through worse and it didn't kill me. Sometimes I just have to remind myself. You know, I've been through some bad, bad stuff hurtful and depressing and uh, sometimes it felt hopeless but I float so I popped back up on the other side I was in the tunnel and it was filled with water and I didn't know if I was going to sink but I survived some because of my faith and some because of my community but I popped back up on the other side. So sometimes I just say to myself, I've been through worse and it didn't kill me. One of the reasons I love being a part of a multi-generational congregation is some of you have walked a longer road than others and you have a voice of faith that says, it's okay, you'll make it. And I, I need that. We need that. Our culture needs that. So I'm grateful to be part of a multi-generational congregation. 
The second reason for hope is that the human story is one of resilience and amazing overcoming. There are amazing stories of people who have survived incredibly difficult and trying things. And the human spirit gives us hope. Sometimes when we get too focused on our own circumstances, we forget that we're part of a much bigger web of meaning. And so to hear other people's stories gives us hope. The third reason is like Simeon and Anna, is we're people who believe in a benevolent force. Whether you name that God or the good, the divine, the eternal, the transcendent, whatever name you give it, a higher power, we are people of faith and we believe that there is good, there is a gravity, a force that pulls us forward. We are not without hope and we are not without help. So where is faith? Where is hope? I think it's located in the combination of three things. You know, scientists have been studying the brain to try and figure out where memories are stored. And it turns out that memories aren't stored in any one given place in the brain. This is amazing. Because if you wanted to take out a memory, let's say there's something you wanted to forget, there is no way that they could go in and locate, rummage around in your brain and locate that memory and pull it out. You can't delete any one memory because it turns out memories are both made and accessed when different areas of the brain connect. And it's that combination, that configuration or constellation that creates a memory. I think hope is that kind of a configuration. It's when three things line up, which is that your heart and your mind and your body or your hands are all going in the same direction. Because in the end, hope is the hard work of staying afloat. It's not about knowing the right things only. It's not just about doing the right things because sometimes you can do the right things and it still doesn't fix the situation. And it's not just about crossing your fingers and getting in the canoe and saying, I hope this works. It's when there is a conviction and there is an alignment where your deep held beliefs and your mental resources and your physical capacity all pull in one direction. That's where hope happens. And this is tricky. It's like gardening. Gardening requires work. But in the end, you don't make the plant and you can't make it grow. But you must work with the soil and the seed to bring it about. This is like hope. You can't always fix your situation, but you need to partner with your circumstances to bring about the good things that your heart desires. I hope that in the new year, you will commit. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of this, but um, next year's an election cycle. <laughs> and uh, there's going to be a lot of animosity, and there's going to be a lot of conflict. There's going to be a lot of anxiety. There's going to be some depression. And we're going to need you as ministers of hope to your friends and neighbors to your co-workers and your family. So my prayer for you today is that you will invest in hope. Cultivate it in your heart. Partner with the soil and the seed to bring about the good you want to see in the world. I hope that you will do this. I hope that you will come next year and we will encourage each other to invest in this way and we will create hope that we can then minister in the world around us. That's my prayer.